Today I have a very simple topic. The point I'm going to make is very simple. But the consequences of thinking about this, not thinking about this, the consequences of reflecting upon this are actually very, very deep. Sutul Yasin, as you know, is the heart of Quran. And Sutul Yasin has different themes. But one of the themes I have recited to you, some of the ayat that have to do with a particular theme. The verse starts like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama. Did I not make a promise to you, O children of Adam? Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama alla ta'abudu shaytan that you don't become obedient slaves to the shaytan. And this reality of shaytan and his tricks, this is the subject that I want you to not think about but reflect on. If Quran is the book of guidance, if Quran is the book of guidance, it gives you the, the way to guidance to go up. Then, one of the interesting things, you know, I'll share this with you, it's kind of interesting, and then it, you'll understand my point better this way. The man, the, the director who made the movie, X, 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 uh, it was called Exorcist, uh, Exorcist, the famous movie, everybody has seen the movie Exorcist. He wanted to prove, uh, the purpose of making that movie was to prove the existence of God. But the way that he did it was he proved the existence of God by proving the existence of the devil. So by showing that the devil exists, therefore, uh, in contrast, in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also must exist. The idea that there is some dark force there that uh, has, you can say, type of, even though Islam doesn't teach us that shaitan has supernatural powers. In the shaitan is da'ifa. The plotting and planning of shaitan is weak. And shaitan is very weak in comparison to human beings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Tutu Safat, which is the very next surah after this, the same theme continuing. فَاسْتَفْتِهِمْ oh, Allah says, ask them, meaning they ask the shayateen, ask the jinns. فَاسْتَفْتِهِمْ أَهُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْفًا Are they a stronger creation than what we... فَاسْتَفْتِهِمْ أَهُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْفًا أَمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ طِينِ اللَّازِمْ Or the one that we created from clay. We created him from sticky clay. Who's stronger? You guys? Or the one we made with sticky clay? If you remember, because a lot of times, you know, Shaitan has his way in every culture coming as a UFO or coming as a vampire 
or a lot of people in the church will say, the Holy Ghost talks to me, maybe you've all heard this, or you may have heard, especially like in concerts when there is, you know, people are just, they feel like they're their alternate ego, or even some of the psychological illnesses that we don't understand, like schizophrenia, multiple personality, when the intelligence of a person changes. It, anyway, my point is, my point is, is not this issue of shaitan. But the Prophet said, for example, when you're sleeping, he, he pees in your ears. You've heard of this, right? So you'll stay asleep. So he's very small. Shaitan is very small and very weak. This is why we can't see him. Because if he was stronger than us, he would be dominating us physically. But the only power that Shaitan has is yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas. He is able to blow ideas into your heart. Give ideas into your heart. He's able to give ideas into your heart. And one of the great things about salah, by the way, is that it helps you distinguish between your thoughts and shaitan's thoughts. Because if shaitan exists, and this is an experience a lot of people have had, that when we pray, for, if I'm doing anything, my focus is fine. But when I'm praying, all of a sudden my focus is, uh, is, is divided. Why is this? So the, the process of salah helps us to learn in, intuitively the distinction between what are my thoughts and what are shaitan, what are not my thoughts, what are the thoughts from shaitan. And this is, you know, very important because if shaitan has the power of you, waswisu fi sudur al nas, to uh, give suggestions in the heart of mankind, and he's giving you suggestions, there comes a point where you don't know if you're listening to yourself and you don't know if you're listening to shaitan. And so the salah particularly is one of those things that really helps you uh, put away, move away your thoughts from his thoughts to make a clear distinction between the two. And you know, this is a common thing amongst Muslims. Muslims will say sometimes, and many of the companions used to say to the Prophet Wasallam, I have thoughts, O Prophet of Allah. Like one companion said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have thoughts. If I was to say them, you know, it, it would reflect so badly upon me. And the Prophet said, that is the sign of Iman. This is the sign that you have faith. The very idea that you're able to distinguish between these types of thoughts you don't want and the thoughts that are yours and you do want, this is the sign of Iman itself. Anyway, the main point I was trying to say, coming back, I'm, uh, I don't want to talk about Shaitan himself, but actually his plots. <clears throat> so, like I said, the movie uh, Exor Exorcist made the movie to prove that the devil exists. In the same way, I want you to reflect upon this. That, you know, if Prophet Muhammad was a false prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if he was just making things up, he would have made some rules. You know, don't do this and don't do that and don't do this and don't do that. Like, I'll give you an example. And this is not to put down any religion, but I'm giving this as an example. For example, in Sikhism, they had some rules. One of the rules was you have to wear a dagger. <coughs> One of the rules is you have to wear a bracelet. One of the rules is you have to have hair in a certain way. But those things are irrelevant in the world we live in, and it hasn't even been, you know, two, three hundred years, four hundred years. Okay? So what this person taught became irrelevant very quickly, within a, a couple of centuries. And even, it's not even what he taught, because what he taught changed over time, because there were many gurus that came in the middle, who actually formulated the, the actual religion later on. But my point is, you know, even if you take, for example, the Mormon religion, and again, I don't want to go into this, but I'm saying that if there's a man-made religion, then the rules that will be there are likely to become irrelevant after a few centuries. I want you to think about the fact that why is it that those very rules that the Qur'an tells us not to do, don't drink alcohol, don't do zina, etc. Et the very rules Qur'an tells us to do are still persistent today. Think about this, right? That there is this force out there that is, because the Qur'an is the book of guidance, and there is a force that is particular, as if, you know, if Muhammad is a true messenger of Allah, it's interesting to look at it from this perspective, that Prophet Muhammad is saying, don't do these things. And there is, over history, those things are still relevant today. And those things are still persistent today. If you want to make a lot of money, then go ahead and do gambling. 
If you want to make a lot of money, then go ahead and make your own beer and sell it. Very easy, easy and fast money by doing the very things that Islam told us not to do. Give, be loan sharks, give people loans on 22% loans and so on and so forth. Become rich super fast. So there is, uh, you can say, something to be said about the fact that the very rules Prophet Muhammad has given us, all the big rules, are still persistent today, are all still relevant to our world today. They haven't become irrelevant. And so shaitan is trying to, you can say, bring us away from that straight path to doing exactly what? What is the goal of shaitan? إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ He is your enemy. And what will your enemy do? Make you do exactly the opposite to do exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. This is his goal. So if, it's not just that shaitan exists and you know he's your enemy. His goal is to make you do the exact things that are opposite of what you should be doing. And not only that, this is also a part that very few... Uh, about shaitan, we think that shaitan is just an enemy to Muslims. No. Shaitan, according to Quran, is an enemy to all of mankind. From the perspective that regardless of who Adam was and what Adam was, he was a human being. And from the perspective that he is an enemy of a human being, from the perspective he's jealous, but he wants to humiliate mankind. Period. Of course, the bigger goal, the specific goal is to lead them astray from the guidance. But more than that, make you pierce, do piercing, wear tattoos on your entire body, you know, just become humiliated so that he can laugh at you and say, this is what Allah asked me to bow down to? To, to basically try to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this thing that I was asked to bow down to didn't deserve it. And to bring down human beings to the point where they're basically worse than animals. So, Ya Bani Adama, O oh, children of Adam, Alam ahad ilaykum, did I not promise you? Alam, uh, ya Bani Adama, Allah, Alam ahad ilaykum, Ya Bani Adama, Allah ta'budu shaytan. Did I not say not to become enslaved by shaytan, by his ways, by his charm? But that's what it is. There's a very interesting ayah, it's the hadith which I won't go into today. But that's the main thing, you know, it's his charm, his promises. And one of the great promises that we have is hopes. You know, we hope we'll do this, and we'll hope we'll do that, and tomorrow we'll do that, and hope. Until their hopes became extremely extended. Allah says this in the Quran. This is a deception of shaitan. He promises you, oh, just do this, and then this will happen, and just do this, and this will happen. My point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ad, alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adam Allah ta'abudu shaytan. Don't you see from the process of this history, from the beginning of time, and if not from beginning of the time, look at from the time of the Prophet till today, you will find that there is a clear distinction, a clear battle of wills, you can say, between what the Qur'an says on the one side and doing the opposite of what Qur'an says on the other side. And doing the opposite of what Qur'an says seems to be very quick, very charming, very dazzling, very glitter-oriented. Glitter Think about that. how come history runs like this? How come history ran like this? That the things that Qur'an tells us not to do are the very things that are so glitter, glitter, have so much glitter, so much charm in them. If the teachings of the Sikh religion was, you know, you must carry a dagger and no longer it's not, it's not relevant. But how relevant are the teachings of the Qur'an when the Qur'an says, don't do something? And every time Allah says, don't do something, many, not every time, but at least many of the times, Allah will say, like for example, for alcohol, Allah says, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عَمَلُ الشَّيْطَانِ It is amongst the actions of the shaytan. He is the one who is enticing you, giving you hopes, giving you the charm. 
giving you that dazzling look of glitter to go in that, in that direction. So history shows that there has always been this battle of wills between trying to stay on what the Qur'an says and trying... I mean, think about it. Why wasn't it that, you know, we had alcohol for a few hundred years? I mean, foods come and go. Foods become extinct. Why alcohol... You know, like, one of the strangest foods that we have made in the modern times is gum. Chewing gum. It's one of the strangest things. I mean, it's this thing we put in our mouth and we chew. You know. Things come and go. Things that weren't there are there now. Things that were there then are there not there now. But what the Quran says don't do has always been there. It's always been a battle. It's always been relevant. Why alcohol just didn't just come and then go? Why why riba, interest, charging interest, high interest rates? Why didn't that just scheme just stay in a few centuries and then just go? Why did these things stay relevant? Why are they still relevant? And so that speaks to something when you think about all the different sins. And you know, I'm not here to, please come forward. So, Allah says, Alam ahadi ilaykum ya bani Adam. Did I not promise you, O mankind, don't worship shaitan. There is always going to be a force that's going to lead you in the opposite direction of what I say. And he's going to make it so much more charming than what I'm saying. Even though I, what I'm saying gives you comfort, gives you sakina, gives you tranquility. My way will give you tranquility. His way is the way of fire. It's just going to burn you. It's going to entice you. It's going to make you angry. Oh, oh, children of Adam, did I not promise you? Don't become slaves and enslaved to shaitan. And if you become enslaved to him, he's your enemy. You think you're getting benefits. You, you fall for that sweet candy that's actually poison. It's going to kill you at the end. And you can't even imagine. I can't go into this topic right now. But you can't even imagine how much the world of shaitan hates human beings. How much shaitan hates human humans. It's a very interesting subject. But Then Allah says, Ani'abuduni. Look. Instead of becoming his slave who's your enemy, you're going to become the slave of the one who's your enemy? Ani'abuduni. No, you should become, you should enslave yourself to me. I'm not your enemy, I'm the one who made you. If you come my way, I'm the one who made you. Ani'abuduni hadha sirat mustaqim. Look, I'm going to give you the straight, the guidance. I'm not going to do uh, miracles for you so that you just go to Jannah. No, you have to work hard and you have to stay on Sirat al Mustaqim and you have to work hard and you have to fight that battle of wills with Shaytan. <laughs> Don't you see? Now, this is how it connects to the topic of today. Allah says, <coughs> Do you not see? How Shaytan has led crowds and generations and generations and crowds before you that he led them astray, away from the book of Allah, away from the teachings of Islam. Also, just as a side point, the point I was making about relevancy of religion, I gave the example of Sikhism. But if you look at Christianity also, and this again, I'm not trying to bring down, my point is not to bring down any religion, but just to make a point. Christianity at one time told the best thing is to become a monk. To become celibacy, don't get married. Today the Pope is allowing people to become priests in the Catholic Church. You don't have to get married, come on. And there's so many examples like this. 
where a religion, one of the qualities of false religion would be that it's not true to its origin. And one of the, and, and again, I'm not trying to bring down any religion, but I'm just saying that the quality of a true religion is that it would be true to its origin. It would be true to its origin from beginning to, and in fact, um, well, I won't go into that right now. Okay. So Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُ تَعْقِمُونَ Do you not see how many people have, have gone astray before? Before you generations that went astray? Do you not use your aql? Do you not use your understanding? That, look, there is a history here. There, the Islamic view of history, and this is also very important. The Islamic view of history is that there is, from the time that Adam came down, or actually even before the time that Adam came down, that there will be a battle of wills between truthhood, truth, and batil, what is not true. What is not true is in many shades, and what is true, nur, you know, is singular always in Quran. Bulumat is always plural. So falsehood has many shades. And then truth is nur, light. To become enlightened is just one phenomenon, one phenomenon, one reality. So there is a bat the Islamic view of history is that there is a battle of wills, if you may say, between haq and batil. Between the forces of batil, who are with shaitan and his progeny. And of course, with him means amongst human beings that are with him. And the people that are on the truth. And they're always battling over the same issues. You know, like how the Republican Party and the Democrat Party are always battling over the same issues. Whether it is abortion or whatever the issues are. Throughout history, the people of Haq and the people of Batil have argued over the same, same issues. The same, you can say, 50, 60, 70, 80 issues. So, inshallah, I will finish uh, the khutbah in the second khutbah. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimina wa al-Muslimat. الحمد لله نحمده نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساء من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يؤسهما فلا يضب إلا نفس أما بعد so I was asking us to reflect on this verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama Oh children of Adam have I not promised you Over here also I want to uh, mention something important I think you will find this interesting I have always found this point uh, very interesting from the time that I read it uh, This is a hadith of Ibn Abbas and you know Ibn Abbas is Khibrul Ummah He is the the Mufassar of Qur'an, he is the, he is the one who knows Qur'an the most uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the uh, ta'wil al-khas, meaning from the, from the perspective of asbab al-nuzul. Please come forward, please come forward. I have to finish quickly now. that I was referring to the hadith I was referring to is the hadith of Ibn Abbas uh, in which he explains something very interesting 
I'm going to give you the gist of hadith. The time is running out. Everything that Allah has created in the universe, for example, the sun, it can't get closer to Allah than the position it has been given. Jibreel, for example, has a certain position. He cannot get closer or less closer to Allah than the position he has been assigned. Everything has a fixed position in regards to its closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Adam was told, after these events had taken place, Adam was told, according to Ibn Abbas, because Adam wanted to be closer to Allah. Adam was told, okay, for you and for your children, I will allow you to infinitely come closer to me. Allah said this to Adam. What is, because what I'm trying to explain is, Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani. What is the promise that's being referred to? So, Adam was told, I can get close, you can get as close to me as you wish. It's up to you. And your progeny also. You won't have a fixed position. But, if I'm going to allow that, then I'm also going to give the opposite, which is, and maybe from the perspective of Adam, it was like almost, how would that even be possible? And that is that, if you can get as close to me as possible, then, then the opposite is true. If you don't do what I want, and you don't do what I say, and you don't do what the guidance is, then you will also go farther and farther away from me, infinitely farther, infinitely closer. And Adam, he said, yes. And this is referred to in another surah. Where Allah says, Adam in haste, he was hasty. So, Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani Adam. Did I not make a promise with the old children of Adam? Allah ta'abudu shaytan. You were warned that don't go towards shaytan. Allah ta'abudu shaytan. Inna hu lakum ajubu mubin. Wa ani'abudu ni. But come closer to me. Become my slave. Hadha siratu mustaqim. This is the straight path. Wa lakad adhalla minkum jibillan kathira. Did you not see how many people, how many people we've led astray before this? And this is the point, the main point I wanted to make. And again, I will do this, make this point, and then we'll pray. Because today, um, Asr comes in at 2.20, so I have to really finish Asr today. So, and that is that there has been a battle of wills in history. And it is so strange when you think of, when you reflect upon this point, when you ponder upon this point, that the very things Qur'an says don't do, humanity is stuck in doing. Qur'an says don't drink alcohol, humanity wants to drink alcohol. Qur'an says don't deal with interest, humanity wants to deal with interest. Humani uh, Qur'an says don't do zina, women think it's freedom to take off their clothes. You know, and shaitan has made such a it's so lucrative, business-wise, and it is so charming. In fact, over time, you can say from the time of the Prophet till today, the very thing Qur'an says don't do are becoming, have become more charming rather than less charming, have become more relevant than less relevant. It's not like the Guru Nathak said, you know, hold a dagger and wear some, and they're not relevant rules anymore. The very thing Qur'an said don't do are the very things that over time we're getting closer to. They become more enticing, more, more attractive. So again, I'll just repeat these verses one last time. Please move forward again and then we will pray inshallah. <laughs> Did we not make a promise with you that don't worship shaitan? You start following his rules, it's like you become his slave. <coughs> He's your enemy. Why would you do that? But worship me. Did you not see how many people in the past have been led astray? Do you not have brains? Do you not use your insight? Do you not use your aql? 
then what will happen? This is that fire, the hellfire. Today you're seeing it, meaning on that day you will be told, this is that fire that you were promised. That you found the charm of the world so charming and you forgot about this. This is the thing that you used to call towards. <coughs> Today you will be burnt in it because of your rejection of this, because you rejected the truth. So, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to become away from shaitan and closer to Allah, and also for our children. So, um, after the salah, there will be announcements. Dr. Khan will do the announcements. The, uh, Dr. Khan will do the announcements. I do want to mention that we do have a fundraiser coming up. So uh, please do listen to the announcements after the uh, prayers. Rabbana ghulamna anfusana wa illam taqfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunna min khasirin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhab al-nar. Rabbana ghulamna anfusana wa illam taqfil lana wa tarhamna lana kunna min khasirin. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhuliyatina kurrata ayuni wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imamu. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد آمين اللهم آمين إن الله يعمرك بالأذل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر وبغي عندكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة